Woo. All right, so welcome again to Military Guna TV. Thank you very much for joining me, people. And today we'll be discussing Arsenal nightmare, Arsenal fans nightmare, and the horror show, the real, real horror show that is about to come. So, people, um, please smash that like button. I would really appreciate it if you guys do. And we will also be speaking um about Odison Edward, Jesse Lingard. So. These are these guys are actually in the media surrounding Arsenal for quite a while now. But we have to talk about our show first. We have to get that out of the way as quick as possible so we can move on to the good news. Because definitely, I strongly don't believe that we'll be um, seeing ourselves passing the Europa League semi-finals. I can't see it until unless these guys really turn up and give us a good showing. So Slavia Pra versus Arsenal, Arsenal versus Slavia Pra, and I do believe that this is going to be a very difficult game. Hopefully, it's one that we can. Um, putting a lot of work into and get this over the the, 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 the over the hill because <laughs> people I'm gonna as I said before I'm being honest I'm being really really honest I cannot see us really going past Slavia Pro these guys are going invincibles these guys are doing what we did back in the way back then but people smash that like button um, as you guys come in um so Let's move over to Slavia Pra. Let's go into a bit of details in Rut. Let me, I won't even. I will, I will not go into any stats. I'm just going to discuss the game. So Arsenal versus Slavia Pra. Last time out we drew the game one one. We got so much opportunities that we did not take those opportunities. And then on the later stage of the game comes on Nicolas Pepe. Also Pierre Mekabomiang and uh, Pierre Mekabomiang set, setting up Nicolas Pepe and uh, he got the one goal ahead in the last nine minutes and the ninety third ninety plus three. 90 plus three people um they got back a goal um got their away goal in which was very disheartening and they really looked deflated all arsenal fans was very very much deflated and it impacted us it really really impacted us and i'm hoping that i'm definitely hoping that it's something that we can um get over the line in this one i'm hoping so moving into this game we have a bit of um good news um we're hoping to see the likes of smith row maybe Odegaard. but guess that we have brighter news um martinelli over the weekend playing against Sheffield United bright spark I do believe that Martinelli should start this game and he has added that that bit of bright spark to our team definitely um the work rate the intensity the tenacity that's something that we have been lacking and that is the reason why we have lost so many games because we have no one to drive the team forward we have so much people talking and all they're doing is this and not doing the right thing on the field so we have been poor we have definitely been poor and it's solely down to our inconsistency and that is the reason why the league has been going on in the manner that it is right now so we sincerely hope that we can get this one over the line and see how best we can do it so i'm definitely going to go into the predicted starting lineup people um stick around for that one and then now we'll move over into the transfer news because i have to do all in one for this one but definitely people stick around for that one um Alright, so people, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about us getting this game over the line. As you guys know, Mikel Arteta will be playing his standard 4-2-3-1. Um, that is a formation that he, he opted to use the entire season and I don't see him changing from that. Um, maybe we're going to see something similar that we saw against Sheffield United with Granit Xhaka playing like a hybrid hybrid left back central midfield role and so let's go people let's run through this one in goal you know you guys know exactly who i'm going with um he deserves this part and his this his part is actually basically untouchable um at center back position for this one people it's a difficult one it's not the easiest um selection i do believe it's not the easiest selection but we have to get um the best selection for this team we have to get the best selection because it is it is really really important that we, we we go to, go with the strongest foot and get the best players in the team because we have to do that so at left left side of center back um it seems as if mari will be the player because mari significantly makes everyone looks much much better so i think mari he's the player for that one especially holding he makes holding look like a hundred times better player that's how, that's how we know that um he's a quality player so oh, as this partnership i would have to go with olin even though gabriel would be a good partnership for mari but it has to be olin people 
Gabri Gabriel would be a good partnership for, for um, Mari, but it has to be Olin people, definitely. Um, let's move over to right back, the difficult position. Um, I don't, I see Chambers did play fairly well, but his crosses weren't so good against Sheffield United, even in previous game. Um, this is a good time to bring back Cedric Suarez into the, into the setup because we have the likes of um, Martinelli, who has very good crosses in his leg, and I do think that those crosses would be critical um to a per, um to a person's um a person a player like um i definitely have to go with cedric suarez for this one people because we know that cedric suarez um is a very very good cross off the ball and what we do know that a player like martinelli who's very very good on it aerially would actually heat his meal playing um with with um cedric suarez and at left back position we have to play um going back for the same system that i saw Mikel arteta deployed um against against um sheffield united so playing granite jacka at left back we know a lot of people might disagree with that but definitely it does it's it is something that we have to look at it is something that we have to consider and think about and we also have um danny sabayos playing in the midfield area as I said, it's like basically a hybrid role, um, switch interchanging in the 10 position. Then now we move over to the next side, Thomas Party. Even though Thomas, um, I think that Danny Sabayas has no luck in the Europa League for Arsenal. Each time he makes a mistake, it leads to a particular goal. And that is something that we have to, <laughs> we have to avoid. Now with the emergence of Saka, this is the problem, people. This is definitely a problem up top. Up top is the problem where we sh we see the likes of Saka there, um, Pepe, Nicolas Pepe playing really really well each time he comes in. So um, let me see. So what I'm going for here, I'm going for. Um, let me see. Mm. It's a difficult one, people. It's really really a difficult one. <sighs> All right. So let me go. All right. So this is what I'm going to do, people. I am going to go with the same starting lineup that we played against Sheffield United for the safe for the safe purpose for the safe reason that these players are available and we we might hear good news that this person is available and that person is available and then they're not so going for pepe over on the right hand side bakaya saka in the, the central attacking midfield position and up front and over to the left hand side we have martinelli because we know what he brings to the team definitely what martinelli brings to the team people that is what we need that energy, that tenacity, that ability to get into inside of the 18 yard box. That is definitely on what we need. And up front, where we still are unsure about Pierre Mecca bombing, even though he might might be deemed fit, but definitely I think preca um, precautionary measures will be taken in place. Um take will be taken um with a bombing. So up front, we have to go with Pierre Mecca bombing. And I do believe that there what you're seeing, people, is my predicted starting lineup. Hopefully you guys have no issues hopefully you guys has no have no issues with that one um as you guys can see that is my predicted starting lineup that is my predicted starting lineup. so people um definitely hopefully you guys um put it in the comments what you think would be the best starting lineup to approach this game with but i do believe that um the more midfielders like the inclusion of thomas party Danny Sabias, even Granit Xhaka, definitely would be using like a hybrid back three system with um, maybe, maybe, just maybe Granit Xhaka, um, Pablo Mari and holding. And when we're in the attacking position, Granit Xhaka slide into that midfield position with Bakaya Saka maybe falling or Danny Sabias falling that left half area to provide support for Granit Xhaka and uh, Martinelli. But Mar Bakaya Saka would definitely be linking up with um, Saka and Thomas Party um, over on the right hand side providing an attacking outlet for, for them. So why did I have Pierre Mekka bombing? My bad people up front has to be Alexander Lacazette. Why did I have a bombing in that? And I just said I would put Lacazette, uh, Lacazette and I still end up on put a bomb. But people, pay that no mind. That's 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 how my head um, operates some of the time. So people, that is it. And Alexander Lacazette up front. Um, in good good one. Of, well, he's the leading goal scorer for Arsenal right now. So he's definitely in good goal scoring form. And he deserves his spot. He deserves to retain his spot. So that is what I'm going with. So people, um, that there. And my for this game, my prediction is actually a two goals to one. Um, I do believe that um, 
definitely that is something that we have to look onto. So we have other news, people. We have other news. Definitely, we have other news. Something we have to talk about. Players that are linked with Arsenal and are likely to come to Arsenal, and these are news that are um, hitting out with the market. These are news that are hitting out with the market, people. So we have. Um, first person we're going to touch on is Odison Edward um, Arsenal definitely come from the the Telegraph the um, UK tele- Telegraph that um, co that UK um, Arsenal in battle with Leicester City for Celtic striker Odison Edward um, Arsenal with overall forward lines this summer with both Alexander Lacazette and Eddie Nketiah going into their final year of their contract and you guys know that that is something that they try to put in place that when a player is entering into his final year they will definitely move him on so um definitely so we are seeing um, i'm seeing links that is valued in the region of 15 to 20 million um pound um this is expected to be enough to lower um odyssey edward to the emirates and see how well he would cope with that now Let's move over to the next player that we want to discuss and that is a serious one <laughs> and that is one I actually don't want exactly one I don't want <laughs> and he's heavily linked with Arsenal I have no clue why I definitely have no clue why Jesse Lingard is heavily linked with Arsenal I think it's just a sense of player finding form and then now every club is being linked with that particular player i just believe it's one of those situations i don't know why but um i think so so let me run, let me run through some of the, the rumors um so acro- according to this um talksport.com um manchester united weary of holland news um saga but they may revisit uh, um let me see where that There's actually no link. Okay, so Jesse Lingard sets strong transfer message over his Manchester United future amid Arsenal links, according to Football.London. Jesse Lingard has been urged to consider his option ahead of the summer transfer window after impressing on loan at West Ham from Manchester United. The English international has been a standout performer since making the move to West Ham on loan in January to um, um, scoring six goals in eight appearances for David Moyes men. His form has helped the Hammers push for a European League football with West Ham sitting sixth in the table ahead of their future against third place Leicester City this afternoon. While he's also earned a recall to Garrett um, Southgate's uh, three Lions squad, he's, about, uh, he's definitely um, making himself a bit more marketable. But I do believe these are just talks because I don't think that Arsenal will really look at just Well, I don't. Let me not say that because this is Arsenal. We come with some unexpected things, people. But definitely, um, um, talks are in place because this is just a, a highlight of what is happening and what Jesse Lingard is doing. So everyone is now boosting Jesse Lingard to make a move. And guess what? Arsenal are the talking point. Arsenal is always the talking point in the media. So that could be the, one of the reasons why we are linked with him. All right. So thank you very much, people. So that is it. Um, Jesse Lingard and also Edison Odo, um Odinson Edward um, from Celtic and Jesse Lingard heavily linked with Arsenal. Um, let's see how that one goes according to Telegraph and also football that London. So people, um, that is it. That is it for me. Um, definitely Arsenal will win this game against Slavia Pra. Two goals to nil. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. But um, these talks about with Jesse Lingard, I think they are just clickbait, and also there could be. Um, legitimacy in Odison Edward because that has been going on for the longest while now. Let's see how that one progress. So, people, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Military Guna TV. Hopefully, guys, enjoy the show. This has been a really good one. Guess what? I am out.